What's up everybody, what's good? My name is EK and welcome to What's Good English and today we're just gonna get right into it. Y'all remember I made this video, right? Well, a couple days ago I was working on a different video that's gonna come out shortly. Someone commented this on it and I responded with this, which is how a lot of people actually feel about the situation, but they did not like that comment because they responded back with this and then later on, they added this. By the way, I am not a big enough creator on this platform to justify turning off my email notifications for comments that I receive on my YouTube videos. So whenever you press that send button, I will see the rough draft of whatever you're trying to write. I'm gonna respond to your argument in reverse order, specifically because I saw your first draft, which leads me to believe that you thought what you wrote about the Waynes brothers portraying white women in the movie White Chicks was somehow checkmating what I had just written previously. And this is also for everyone who makes that exact same old tired argument every year around Halloween time when someone makes a career ending costume choice. There is a difference between putting on someone else's race as a costume and playing up stereotypes about that race or culture for laughs and doing that as a plot device in a movie. Especially when those stereotypes that you're using to get a laugh are actively being used to discriminate against people of that race or culture. Stuff like being lazy or unintelligent as if working from sun up to sundown picking cotton in a field were somehow lazy or teaching planters how to cultivate rice in the swamp so that they wouldn't die of starvation was somehow unintelligent. And that's not even beginning to mention stuff like Is meet me at the zoo in the morning at nine o'clock. Yeah with the rest of the monkeys. With the rest of the monkeys. Yeah I'll bring my grandpa with me. There is a long history of racism and mockery attached to blackface. It is synonymous with it and the joke of blackface has always been on black people. The Waynes brothers dressing up like white women in the film White Chicks as a plot device is not the same thing as putting on the race of another culture and playing the worst stereotypes about that culture for laughs. Now the movie White Chicks is from the year 2004, but you might also recall another movie from the year 2008 by the name of Tropic Thunder, which featured the actor Robert Downey Jr. for all intents and purposes in blackface. The reason that worked and the reason that there's never been any real smoke about that is because of a very important distinction about that role. Robert Downey Jr. played an actor who was playing a stereotype, and that was made obvious throughout the entirety of the movie, unlike Mickey Rooney's character from 16 Candles in which he actually played the stereotype. By the way, do not take what I just said as inspiration for a Halloween costume. If I see anybody trying to dress up like that character from Tropic Thunder, you will be getting all of the smoke. Now that I put this whole white chicks thing to bed, let's move on to the main topic. In the year 2000, Spike Lee released a movie called Bamboozled, which was coincidentally another movie that involved white people wearing blackface with no repercussions. It was a satire starring Damon Wayans as a TV producer who was fed up because TV networks only seemed to want to put black people on TV who were portraying certain stereotypes and acting like fools. So in an attempt to get fired from his contract, he created something called Mantan's New Millennial Minstrel Show, which featured black actors in blackface reprising some of those old vaudeville comedy routines You're putting white actors in black face we are using black actors with blacker faces Sleepany and Mantan are lazy and unemployed. Do your stuff. But we are certainly not saying anything about the entire African American community. But instead of the show being the dumpster fire that he believed it would be, it ended up being a huge success. It was as if the audiences had a desperate hunger to see the worst stereotypes about black people portrayed on television. Now, I don't think Spike Lee ever imagined that more than 20 years after the release of that film, there would be a new type of non satirical minstrel show that was playing out in a different theater, namely these little screens that we carry around everywhere. I was just in a secret meeting with Nicki Minaj and I might have just like lost all of my sanity. Well, my name is Tasha, but everybody be calling me Tasha. Island boy. I, I'm a just island boy. I'm a just island boy. One in which blackface would no longer be a requirement because to do your vaudevillian best, you just have to change up the way you talk and your mannerisms a little bit to imitate the stereotype. Or in the case of Victoria, because I know some of y'all remember what I concluded at the end of that video, taking what you already have and turning it all the way up to 11 for social media clout. Which brings up another interesting point. The first version of white privilege I wrote when I was in college. Popping and watching, about to go and get some compliments. Passing up on those moccasins, someone else's 
Yeah. We're together and That's the guy life. caught on fire and he jumped out the window and I'm just like, it's not. It's not ringing a bell right now. Like super cap and dot dot in the dust. Don't bother to touch. I got front grab on the grip of the bus. I might go slide the tank, take a ride of the bank. And My favorite song of all time is Tupac Baby Don't Cry. It made me fall in love with rap music. I said, baby, I do this. I don't need you move me. Kissed it, no reason, and I need to choose me. Talking or rapping, Eminem sounds like himself. Same thing with Macklemore, same thing with LP from Run the Jewels. Iggy Azalea goes from Australian to black girl stereotype and back to Australian as soon as the song ends. You know, it's a bit weird that no one ever finds their inner Australian or like a sassy German woman living inside of them and creates an entire social media presence out of that. It's always some black stereotype. You don't never try to emulate nobody with class and grace like Michelle Obama, Issa Rae, Angela the Bassett, hell, even Beyonce. Nah, you gotta pick the weed, patting, loud mouth, cussing every five seconds, stereotypical hood black woman. Black language and black culture have become a good way to build your social media clout for everyone who's not black. But the thing is, if the only funny or interesting thing about you is the fact that you're playing dress up with these stereotypes, then you're just not funny or interesting. I think by now everyone has either seen or heard part or all of this comedy routine before. You like long or short now, you? Uh, short nails, please, thanks. Oh, honey, that's why you don't have a boyfriend. <laughs> I do for you, long better. <laughs> All right, fine, I'll have long nails, thanks. It's okay, honey, only $4 more, that's okay. <laughs> Do you like crypto jail? She's playing the stereotype of an Asian woman for a laugh. There's nothing actually funny about what she's saying. Everyone is laughing at the stereotype. Now, unfortunately, I can't play the full version of this next clip from Black Lady Sketch Show in its entirety, but I will link to it in the description of this video. However, I do want you to know that a version of that joke exists where no one's culture is being made fun of. Girl, so I looked his pet out in the eye and I said, who you think you talking to? I know that's right, Kima. My thing is this, don't have me looking around for you like you want to, okay? By the way, cut buff is extra. So I was like, and now, where you at? Cause I'm grown. Okay, don't be out here clocking for me like I'm a child. I'm good on the cut and buff. And girl, you know I gotta tell you, he's crazy. I know, but pick this, the next day me and his sister went to Chili's and she has a trim my steak. A cuticle treatment is an extra dollar per nail. Uh, if I'm paying these chili prices, you cannot taste my steak. And also I'm good on the cuticle cleaner. Robin Thede is a comedy goddess and that is not up for debate. And before anyone hops into the comments and types, why do I I even care about what a bunch of kids are doing to try to get social media clout let me explain why clout equals dollars i don't have a ton of youtube subscribers or instagram followers but i have had a pretty healthy following on tiktok for some time now and while i've seen similar sized peers of mine from tiktok have some brand deals i have not gotten a single one i have had a couple brands approach me and one of them offered me a whopping ten dollars the other one ghosted me. But the dollars are different for everyone. You might recall the news story from about a month ago where Forbes featured a list of the highest paid TikTok creators on the application and absent from that list was anyone black, despite the fact that Kabi Lame is the second most followed account on the entire application. He has more than double the following of Dixie D'Amelio, he has more than triple the following of Chris or Avni, and he has more than quintuple the following of this guy. And the fact that this guy even makes this list with these other women is probably saying a lot about white male patriarchy but you know what that is really for another video and I'm probably not even qualified to make that video but in the immortal non-words of Kabi the fact is, in today's world, being some sort of influencer is a legitimate career choice or at least a side hustle, and a lot of people, especially younger folk, will follow whatever strategy they can to try to make that happen. But putting on somebody else's race or culture, like a costume, should not be a strategy. And a lot of us are miffed that not only is it a strategy, but that it also appears to be one that works quite well. So returning to that original comment, she has a gimmick and she made mad money off of it, Okay, yes, that's true, but like I said, painting your face black and portraying black stereotypes used to be a gimmick, and it was one that was very profitable for the people behind minstrel shows. Good for her? No. You know what? 
I am not about to give anyone a pat on the back and an attaboy because they managed to get a lot of social media clout and turn that into dollars by acting black on social media, especially not during Black History Month. As far as people not approving of her being jealous, well, let me tell you, a lot of people who looked just like me did not approve of what was happening in the minstrel shows a hundred years ago. And the way that we felt about those shows is the exact same way a lot of us feel about what is happening with her and people like her right now. That's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you learned something. Let me know in the comments what you think. Thank y'all so very much for liking, commenting, subscribing, and sharing all of my content. Like I said, that helps me out a ton and I will catch y'all on the next one. Oh, hopefully the other video that I was working on will be out before the end of this month because I really think it's something that should come out during Black History Month. Anyway, thanks again. I'll catch y'all on the next one. Ciao.